However, the most important thing here is the trend. We clearly see that more and more people start simply accumulating Bitcoin, a clear trend to the upper right. And at the moment, there's over 14 million Bitcoin, 14 million Bitcoin held by these long-term holders, meaning 70% of all Bitcoin in circulation haven't moved for over 155 days. And out of 19.7 million, there's not a lot of Bitcoin left actually that currently are actively being traded. Now, what's to come next? I think it's, it, it's potentially the last part of a, a bull market. As we can see here, if we compare it to previous markets, of course, here we see the days after the halving. A lot of people always ask, a lot of people actually expect right after the halving that prices will explode, but we always said it's going to take a while to, till the effect takes place. And as we can see here, if we compare it to the previous cycles, it takes, yeah, around 175 days uh, until it actually picks up. And just looking at that, we're very much at the, in the timeline. And then lastly, the seasonality, obviously we show this a lot as well. It basically shows how the Bitcoin price performed historically. And as we can see here, last month we had a webinar where we said October is also titled to be October. We closed October with almost 11%. So that held true. Now what to expect in November and December. Now. So obviously we're already up 8.4%. Uh, and again, if we show it previous cycles here, 2020 and 2016, we can also see that, yeah, also November was usually a positive month for Bitcoin. Maybe a little nugget here, obviously 2016, 2020, those were not only the years of a halving, it was also years with presidential elections. Obviously, no one can really prove why Satoshi Nakamoto chose a four-year cycle, but uh, you can make a lot of assumptions that it's very much in human nature, meaning Olympic Games are every four years, the World Cup is every four years, smaller economic cycles are all, uh, every four years, and the U.S. election. As all also every four years, either it's a pure coincidence or it's really well thought through, but that is up for discussion, obviously. But yeah, maybe my last words in terms of risks, I think geopolitical tensions might be still the biggest risk for markets. Obviously Trump mentioned that he will end the war within 24 hours. I think that's a bit exaggerated. But we could see, hopefully, we do see some favorable changes to that regard. But any escalation, obviously, markets react quite sensitively, especially Bitcoin. The crypto market trades 24-7. So usually when we have a geopolitical shock, we do see the crypto market react first. However, in my opinion, that doesn't take away from Bitcoin long-term value proposition, which is being a global store of value and global assets without any counterparty risk. To be honest, I've, I've been, obviously it's been a long consolidation phase, especially with the selling pressure over the summer, but just taking into account everything that we discussed. In my opinion, it does paint the bullish picture. Objectively speaking here, seriously, it does clearly uh, paint the bullish picture. And it also le legitimizes the asset class. Again, I think we see much more new developments in 2025. And maybe here, my last words, it's obviously also a teaser because in a month we're going to release our market outlook for 2025. We're also going to have a dedicated webinar or call it podcast 